those of you who are not watching us on YouTube or on video, we're in person today. And uh, we're going to give you, you know, some rapid fire news because, you know, we got you a little used to news on Friday. So we're going to try to keep that going. Yeah. Cool. All right. So briefly, some announcements, uh, some events coming up. DiscoveryCon 2023, April 18th through 19th in the Bay Area. Use code PSYCH today for 30% off tickets. PSYC today. Breaking Convention, April 20 through 22nd in Exeter, UK. For 10% off, use the code PSYCH today, BC10. PSYCH today, BC10. Trailblazers later this month. That's going to be a fun one. I'll be there. It's in New York City. It takes a lot to convince me to go to New York. <laughs> so I'm actually pretty excited uh, about this one. It'll be a, an afternoon, then a full day uh, from April 24 through 25. Check that one out if you're interested in more of the business and leadership side of this stuff. SciCon May 19 through 20 in Portland, Oregon. Check them out. Uh, they'll have another one coming up in Denver in uh, late September. Uh, and then the mother of all conferences, the MAPS Denver 2023 Psychedelic Science Conference. I think PS23, they're calling it. June 19 through 23 in Denver. Use code PT15 for 15% off. Um, and is this, uh, are we still selling this course? Yeah, yeah, of yeah. course. Uh, we got? Psychedelic neuroscience demystified how psychedelics uh, alter consciousness and produce therapeutic effects. Uh, that is going to be hosted by Manesh Gurn and Dr. Melanie Pincus. Um, this will be an eight week course, will be live. They're also pre recording some stuff, so you'll get to interact with the instructors and the community. Um, <clears throat> so definitely check that out, and you can go check that out at psychedeliceducationcenter.com. Um, it's going to be a really awesome course. So if you want to dive into neuroscience, this is the course to take. Melanie and Manesh are rock stars. Pretty sure I'm going to take it. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Me too. I, neuroscience is not a, 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 a you know strong point. For no. Me. <laughs> so Kyle, we had some good news today. Um, yeah. You just did a graduation ceremony for the first round ever of Vital. What 100, a hundred plus students. We had nice. a nice two hour uh, graduation ceremony on Zoom today. Um, I'm still feeling a little bit emotional from it. Um, it was definitely like a lot of emotional energy. Um, it was just so exciting to see all these students come together, finish this first year um, of our vital training program. Um, and then having some uh, some of the students' parents were there like supporting, which was like super cool. So great. Um, yeah, so we had some of the students uh, read poems, give some speeches. I gave a speech. And then we had a special guest, uh, Dr. Rosalind Watts, um, join to uh, do a little, little speech as well. And then we had some sound healing, which was really awesome. So yeah, congratulations to all the vital students that just graduated our first inaugural year. You guys are going to go out into the world and do amazing, amazing things. We are about to kick off our uh, next round of vital April 17th. Uh, it's going to kick off on a Monday and then our classes kick off on uh, Tuesday the 18th, our intro call on the 17th. I think we may still be accepting some applications. Email us at yeah. info at psychedelicstoday.com if you're curious. We'd love to have you. Yeah, we're still trying to fit a few more folks in. So again, info at psychedelicstoday.com. And yeah, it's exciting. I'm really pumped for this next year. I think it's going to be bigger, better. We're going to do some really cool stuff. So, yeah, and some of our students are already doing like amazing stuff, like starting up like psychedelic companies and um, you know, starting their integration coaching practices and all sorts of stuff. It's just so cool to watch people grow over a whole year and see how they really kind of step into their own kind of like power and kind of gifts they, they want to offer, offer the world. Pretty awesome. So next up, we're going to try to blast through all this news, everybody. <laughs> I noticed a week or two ago, a uh, friend and colleague, Sean McAllister, uh, <laughs> Uh, his LinkedIn profile says legal guru. That's why I had to kick him a little bit. <laughs> uh, but he's a really important character in the history of psychedelic law reform and cannabis law reform. He's worth knowing. He says, I'm proud to be the first general counsel attorney for the Zendo Project now that it has separated out of maps. It's the first time I've ever heard of that um, happening. It's been great working with their team to forward their mission of harm reduction and peer-to-peer -peer support for psychedelic experiences. So uh, we dug a little further. You want to run through this one for us? Yeah, so um, they had a nice little uh, kind of press release, um, and I'll just read it. So this is from MAPS. As we celebrate a decade of psychedelic service, we're excited to announce that the Zendo Project is becoming its own 501c3 nonprofit 
We will remain closely allied with MAPS as we begin this new chapter under the new leadership of newly appointed uh, Executive Director Chelsea Rose Perez. Uh, Zendo will renew its focus uh, on public education through workshops and webinars where communities can learn to support individuals exploring altered states. Zendo Project will continue to provide and expand on on-site harm reduction services at large events and conferences. And a little bit about Chelsea. Uh, she's a licensed marriage and family therapist and began working at the Zendo Project in 2013 and has been an integral um, part to develop uh, and operations of the program and uh, lovingly called Mama Bear by the Zendo Project community. She brings a caring, uh, inclusive, and community-centered approach into this new phase of Zendo development. So congratulations, Chelsea, and also to the Zendo Project for um, establishing as 501c3. Yeah, incredible. I, I love Zendo, always have, and excited to see where uh, they'll go in the future. It's going to be cool. Next up <laughs> from BBC, we'll have uh, link, links to all these in the show notes. Um, headline, people were taking drugs in Spain 3,000 years ago, study finds. At first, I'm like, oh yeah, no shit. <laughs> but, but then, you know, let's dig in. All right, so hair was found at a cave burial site in Menorca. Site was used for burial 600 years until 800 BCE, meaning uh, 1400 BCE, roughly. So that's a pretty good history. Um, I think the caves that Graham Hancock talks about predate that, but not bad. The only other existing evidence of prehistoric drug, drug use is from artist depictions of psychoactive plants. This discovery really does change the game and the story quite a bit. Three drugs were found in their hair, atropine, scopolamine, and ephedrine. So ephedrine is pretty neat. Um, I wouldn't do it at high doses all the time, but atropine and scopolamine, those are kind of like the belladonna. Exactly. <clears throat> Yeah. Delirians, uh, typically. Yeah. Yeah. And these are kind of somewhat typical European psychedelics. Like in the witchcraft traditions, it's pretty clear that they're using the Torah and other kinds of uh, delirians for sure. Yeah. Um, and here's the quote Atropine and scopolamine are classical muscaneric cholinergic antagonists that exert multiple CNS effects, belonging to a group of deliriant hallucinogens. These drugs induce delirium like hallucinations, hyperactivity altered affective states and amnesia however as delirians they remain the least studied group of hallucinogens and that's coming from a uh, nih article uh, acute behavior effects of uh, delirian hallucinogens atropine so you can check that link in our show notes as well i remember uh terence mckenna on one of his talks like was talking about scopolamine and he's like you know the effects of it is you're in the jungle on the cell phone and you're nowhere near jungle and cell phones don't exist <laughs> Something along those lines. And, you know, it's really important to note, um, and I got into this with Graham Hancock, that we believe that there's just a massive amount of psychoactive use um, in, in the ancient prehistoric world. So, like worldwide, this is not isolated phenomena. <laughs> I remember, yeah, I'm going to go off the rails, but briefly. <laughs> so, um, I had this lovely dinner with um, the world's leading scholar of the Mongols, and with us was a a tenured professor of the classics so like greeks mediterranean region all that and um we had a lovely dialogue about like what would prehistoric drug trade look like you know and we had hours of conversation on that and so it's something that's um definitely ripe for investigation and speculation for sure i'd love some historical fiction of you know what, it, what was drug running like on the silk road <laughs> 2000 bce and, you know, what were the Egyptians buying? <clears throat> Next up. <laughs> well, I mean, it's just important, right? Because, like, uh, yeah, these substances, these plants, drugs have been part of human history for so long. And, you know, it's not just like new behavior. So I think it's just an important reminder when news comes out like this. Like, humans have been engaging in this, in ingesting plants and other substances for, for millennia. <laughs> for so long. <laughs> yeah. Um, so next up from the Telegraph Co. UK. Um, Rory Lamont, my rugby injuries made me suicidal and psychedelic drugs saved me. That's from a famous rugby player. You want to run through this one? Yeah. So famous rugby player, um, article, uh, Rory Lamont's, uh, personal reaccount and experience and how psychedelics helped and s helped him and saved his life. Um, early in his career, Lamont, uh, partied hard and played even harder, suffering traumatic injuries. Throughout his career, you know, Joe's pointing at himself, <laughs> all the biking and skiing and all that stuff. Um, so, yeah, um, 
had suffered traumatic injuries throughout his career without taking breaks to heal. And then pharmaceuticals were pushed uh, on him for pain and nothing seemed to be working. So on the brink of suicide, he decided to take a iboga trip in Costa Rica, which was a life-changing experience. Um, his wife didn't understand the journey and they ended up divorcing. Um, but now he's happy with a new partner, Shannon, and they partake in psychedelic journeys often. And I think, you know, just that uh, statement itself just shows how psychedelics can disrupt if we don't prep systems and like really thinking about, you know, how does rapid change and healing affect the, the people around you. Um, and those are, I think, really, really important conversations. Um, and so now he's a role ambassador for Heroic Hearts and continues to advocate for the medicine that's helped him. And uh, there's a quote here. Suicide is the biggest killer of people under the age of 35 in the UK. Wow. And then men um, under the age of 50. Mm -hmm. Worth noting. And uh, we'll try to track that guy down <laughs> and see if we can do be something there. There's a, a quote in the article, um, Judu Krishnamurti quote. I, I love this one. It's no measure of health to be well adjusted to a profoundly sick society. There's some arguments to be made there for and against, but I think uh, you all understand that one. Next up from Benzinga, bipartisan letter calls for including active service members in psychedelic assisted therapy research. Crenshaw, Republican from Texas, is now leading a bipartisan legislative effort to encourage active duty service members to participate in research with psychedelics funded by the NIH. Um, NIH is the largest public funder of biomedical research in the world. No, it's the world. And this is why Melissa's work is so important with PMC. Uh, there's not enough information about how well MDMA uh, treatment works for active duty military personnel with PTSD because the people who receive this treatment in a study have been struggling with PTSD for an average of 14 years. Average of 14 years. Wow. Yeah. Almost 13% of active duty military personnel have PTSD and that chronic pain is often related to PTSD in these individuals. Yeah. And um, just note that veterans and veteran support is always going to be an amazing strategy um, when we're trying to get bipartisan support for these efforts. You want to run through this next one? <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, the, the title here, this is also from Benzinga. This South American country wants to legalize natural psychedelics. What's going on in Uruguay? Um, so Uruguay, 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 um, I always forget, um, has filed a bill uh, to legalizing access to psychedelics uh, if prescribed by a physician. So substances proposed for legalization include uh, psilocybin, MDMA, uh, ibogaine, DMT, mescaline, and psilocin. Um, and cultivation, distribution, possession, and use not and not sale would be decriminalized <clears throat> so yeah it sounds like you could cultivate um and just not sell it but that's an interesting model it's it's similar to colorado's a little bit yeah except it requires a prescription so it's like a hybrid of like the regulated model we'll get and that it's yeah. interesting so we should learn more about that it's yeah. fascinating so the uh, bill was proposed by Juan Santori, a member of the uh, center-right National Party. And Satori founded an investment fund that appears to share similar views, similar interests um, as, this, as the psychedelic industry. Mm, interesting. And um, yeah, Uruguay was really early in cannabis legalization. So yeah, <laughs> other countries, if you want to uh, keep up, maybe, maybe jump in. And uh, Exciting to just see how this like is also happening outside of the United States. It's fantastic. Yeah. Like Uruguay probably saw a great benefit when they legalized cannabis and then, you know, decreased expense, like less overdoses. So like, oh, what else are the Americans doing or these pioneering people doing to like, you know, get other revenues and other things like that. And, and for context, Uruguay is, uh, it borders Buenos Aires, um, Argentina, <laughs> and then it's directly south of uh, Brazil and it is coastal. It's not landlocked or anything like that. Yeah. Cool. Well, I think that's it for our news updates. So please let us know what you think. Leave us some reviews. Shoot us a message if you have any thoughts. Info at psychedelicstoday.com. And we'll see you on the next episode. Have a great night. Take care.